walking along the street or you're at a party or else you're alone and then you suddenly dig you're looking in someone's eyes you suddenly realize that this could be the start of something big Questions of gender and sexuality in Hollywood cinema are ones which aren't easily answered. While the early years of the 20th century brought a seeming cut and dry simplicity, as World War II wrapped up in 1945, it became clear that the effects of the conflict extended far beyond the battlefield. The world was changing and it was happening faster than anyone was ready for. The changes to women and women's issues for that matter during this period have and do continue to be documented. Most are familiar with War Rosie the Riveter. However, those affecting men don't seem to be quite shown in the same clarity. Wartime masculinity can be easily defined on movie screens. We all know the image, perhaps it is John Wayne in the Sands of Iwo Jima or Errol Flynn in pretty much every movie he ever made. Sergeant, he's here. Well, what do you know? Striker. Hello, Thomas. Thank you, Major. Well, the march from the radar station to the airstrip will be a forced march that shouldn't last over 11 hours at most. Wartime masculinity was tough and rugged while still being dashingly handsome. These men could kill Nazis with one hand while sweeping the leading lady off her feet at the exact same time. This idealized masculinity was very much that of a dashing man's man. He had to be. I mean, it is easier to send John Wayne off to a battlefield than your son or your boyfriend. It's easier to believe that John Wayne will come home alive. It becomes clear that while the action heroes of Hollywood showed what we might have wanted from our fighting forces, actors like Robert Walker were the heart of masculinity in this era. Robert Walker is stated to have been born in 1918 and hailed from Salt Lake City, Utah. The young actor is credited with 23 films and his far too short of career before his untimely death. Walker's early roles on IMDb are said to be uncredited, coming as early as the late 1930s. You know the type. These movies were a dime a dozen being made quickly in the 1930s. Dancing Coeds, These Glamour Girls, and Winter Carnival all came out in 1939. Dancing Coeds and These Glamour Girls both star Lana Turner. The young starlet was on a fast rise to stardom after her breakout in 1938's Love Finds Andy Hardy. Walker's career jumped into high gear beginning in 1943 when he nailed down his first credited role in the war film Bataan. The movie was based on real events from the first part of 1942 when the U.S. faced off against Japan in what is still remembered as some of the most brutal fighting World War II ever saw. <laughs> hit movie theaters in June of 1943 and starred Robert Taylor, Thomas Mitchell, and Lloyd Nolan with newcomers like Robert Walker and Desi Arnaz rounding out the cast. The New York Times posted their review on June 4th by longtime critic Bosley Crowther in which he mentions Walker's performance. Robert Walker, a newcomer as the sailor, is green and as pliant as the sapling branch whose emotions run unguardedly to the surface and sends wistful signals to your heart. Walker received another write-up from Crowther a few years later in an article entitled Hollywood's New Fair-Haired Boys. He writes, One of the most striking aspects of wartime mutations on the screen has been the spectacular emergence of a new crop of youthful male stars. Boyishly young in looks and in whimsies of personality, these war-born pepper-uppers have been all the more sensational because of the rapidity with which they have come along. In that same year, it was announced that Walker had been tapped to play the lead in the film based on Marion Hargrove's wartime novel, See Here, Private Hargrove. While the book, and the film for that matter, is seen as a bit of a cultural blip now, it led to a sequel, What Now, Private Hargrove, which hit theaters in Christmas of 1945. A study of Walker's filmography shows two distinct phases to his film career. For the first part, he played a massive number of soldiers throughout the war and the immediate post-war years. His career did seem ready to evolve into the 1950s, particularly after he appeared in Alfred Hitchcock's Strangers on a Train, but the change came to an abrupt halt with his passing. Two fellows meet, like you and I. No connection between them whatsoever. Each one has somebody that he'd like to get rid of. So... 
They swap murders. However, in 1944 and 1945, Walker played the two parts which seemed to most develop his screen persona. Since she went away, premiered in 1944, the movie stars Claudette Colbert, Jennifer Jones, and Shirley Temple in an examination of wartime domesticity on the wartime home front. The movie is a particularly powerful and prominent one in Walker's career for personal reasons, which I will go into soon. Meanwhile, The Clock, which came out in 1945, partners Walker opposite the legendary but tragic Judy Garland in a poignant wartime romance set in New York City. So the laws of the state of New York now pronounce your husband and wife. Sometimes when a girl dates a soldier, she isn't only thinking of herself. She knows he's alone and far away from home and no one to talk to. And... What are you staring at? You've got brown eyes. Alice! <laughs> will, you, will you break that thing tonight? Yes! Oh. oh! Where'll I meet you? Under the clock at the after at seven. Where? Under the clock at the His pairing with Judy Garland serves to highlight and emphasize the inherent vulnerability involved. These two actors were, throughout the course of their careers, used and spat out by the Hollywood studio system. In this movie, this element can best be signified the expansive and all-encompassing change brought about by the war. While they both were young and glamorous actors, it is all at once believable that they are the boy and the girl next door, dwarfed and vulnerable in the face of the events going on around them. In Crowther's breakdown of the rise of the fair-haired boys, he discusses the shift in leading men along with Walker. He lists men like Van Johnson, Gregory Peck, Cornel Wilde, and Dick Haynes. Meanwhile, to the exodus of fighting male A-listers, he lists those like Clark Gable, Jimmy Stewart, Tyrone Power, and Henry Fonda, who all went into military service during World War II. Crowther goes on to describe in this article that during the war, the average age of the movie going public decreased. He says, the proportion of paying customers below the age of 21 increased steadily since Pearl Harbor, noting a 10% rise in the 17 to 19 age span. He goes on to say that customers favored those stars with whom they can literally or romantically identify themselves. And reading this article, the changes make sense. In the early part of his career, Robert Walker is incredibly identifiable. He's not the strapping action male star. He looks like a boy. He's a young father. His eyes show everything from the awe of first love to the terror of going into battle. It's easy to envision bringing him home to mom or wanting to join the war effort to protect other boys like him. Meanwhile, another element playing into Walker's vulnerability is the dramatic and tragic elements playing out in his personal life throughout the 1940s. His marriage to performer Jennifer Jones fell apart during the early part of the decade as she became increasingly involved with her own career and with future husband and movie producer David O. Selznick. The tragic relationship is particularly on display in 1944's Since She Went Away. Not only was Walker appearing opposite his increasingly estranged wife, but Selznick was also helming the movie as producer. The strain and stress of working on the picture was damaging for both, but the years which followed saw Walker plunging into the depths of alcoholism and mental health issues. You will marry me when it's over, won't you, Jane? You won't be mad at me because I didn't marry you now. Of course 
I won't be mad. But you take care of yourself. I will. You write to me. I will. You do understand, don't you? I think so. You know, it's because I wouldn't want you to be... Well, you know, I... If anything happened to me... A widow, you mean? Well, yes, but not only that. If something happened, I mean, if I was... If you were wounded? Oh, Bill, I'd take care of you the rest of our lives. Always. Oh, Bill. Gee, we're being silly. Maybe I'll be sent to Bermuda or someplace. I don't think so. Why, Jane? Because you're going to really show them. And you know where we'll go when you're married? Where? Right up to West Point, that's where. And you'll show them your medals. Four. Better get on. Oh, I almost forgot I have something for you. You have? Oh, gee, you didn't have to do that. Here, it's my class ring. Oh, that's wonderful. You sure you don't need it? I don't know what's more important than it's being our engagement ring. Isn't it awful that I didn't get you a ring? But I'll send you one. It doesn't fit very well. Maybe I should have gotten you something else. Oh, no. I, I'd rather have this than anything. Well, get on, son. We're about to pull out. Hurry up, son. greatest roles came with strangers on a train in the last year of his life he would struggle mightily with addiction demons and personal struggles before passing away at the painfully young age of 32. ultimately robert walker became one of the symbols of tragic world war ii era masculinity in his struggles with his personal problems which followed the downfall of his marriage his fate really traces that of some men in the years following world war ii masculinity in the years following this period was not as clean and, and as cardigan clad as mass media would have one believe while the men who fought overseas were heroes who gave everything they had for the cause they were just men and boys these were the boys next doors who faced such horror and trauma yet in the drastic return to normalcy that was the 1950s they were supposed to press on and continue like nothing was wrong however sometimes that is just not an option Robert Walker was an actor who could have done a great many things. A young performer, he filled a very specific role during a very specific part of history, and tragically, he was only truly hitting his stride at the end of his life. He was a great talent, and it is one of the biggest tragedies that we couldn't see the great things he was bound for. Stay tuned for more Herod Female Days productions as we look at classic popular culture through historical and feminist lens. My name is Kim. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at kpeer624. And as always, if you like what you're seeing, please like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.